ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وبعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد always and forever we begin with the praise of Allah we send our prayers of peace upon our nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we testify with firmness and conviction that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that our nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his worshiping slave and final messenger I continue to remind and admonish myself and you with taqwa Allah azza wa jalla. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inherits within our privacy and our private life a greater consciousness and awareness of our dealings with Him than what we seek to show each other in our public displays. Allahumma ameen. Hani'an lakum ibad Allah. How joyful it is for you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters in Islam with the beginning and the middle of the month of Ramadan. And for all of us, as the month of Ramadan continues to tick away, it becomes a moment of escalating sorrow and anticipation of an eventual day of Eid. And I wish inshallah in the few minutes that I have with you today to speak about the month of Ramadan as it should be, not as a month that we regret after its departure. Every year, at the end of the month of Ramadan, I always sit with myself, as I'm sure you do with yourselves. And I look at myself and my family and ask, what have we accomplished? What have I gained? And what has changed? And if you were to look at the criteria of your life, the barakah that is exchanged in your homes, the new friendships that you've made and assumed, the amount of people that have entered into goodwill, and the amount of disputes that you have settled. There's always this nagging, limited capacity within us to have done more. وَإِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّورِ And for each and every one of us, may Allah make us at least from those souls and that self that has a blaming nature to it. I could have done better, and I should have done less from that which I know is in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I wish today to speak to you about the difference between Siyam and Sawm. You might say, Akhi, they sound the same, but they are entirely different. Siyam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O ye who have believed, kutiba alaykum al-Siyam. Siyam, has been prescribed, written, ordered upon you. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ As it was written and prescribed on the nations that have come before you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps by enduring the capacity of Siyam, you will come to the end of its stages in this blessed month of Ramadan, and you have attained a higher level of conscious awareness of your dealings with Allah. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word sawm, it's in a very different context. Siyam is an involuntary, obligated, written injunction upon you by Allah. Where as a man, as a woman, if you meet its very four simple conditions of you being a Muslim, who is baligh, has reached an age of maturity, 
who is qadir, available and able, not in travel, not in illness, and who's a person who has been given that strength by Allah, then fasting is written upon you as it was written upon nations before us. But Saum is entirely different. Saum is something voluntary. And hence the difference. So when you hear Allah use the word Saum in the Quran, and the Prophet ﷺ used the word Saum, they differentiate between it and Siyam. So Allah says about Maryam السلام, in the 19th chapter, فَإِمَّا تَرَيَنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَوْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا O oh Maryam, when you come carrying your child and they begin to accuse you falsely of having committed zina and having begotten this son from illegitimate means, simply say to them, إِنِّي نَذَوْتُ I've taken a vow of صَوْم to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shows us the distinction between siyam and sawm by saying, man lam yada qawl az-zur. The one who is unwilling, has not changed within his character and his capacity and his will. His inability to restrict his tongue, his mouth from speaking falsehoods Qawl al-Zur, witnessing statements of falsehood, making hypocritical declarations, making statements that are unsubstantiated and untruths. Wal or action upon those statements. فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ That person, even though they are in siyam, they don't eat and they don't drink, but they're incapable, unwilling, to voluntarily, intentionally, willfully restrict their tongue and their behavior, Allah has no need for them to leave their food and drink. Sawm is a voluntary act. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the reward on the day of judgment, He speaks in two different ways. In a hadith that is Qudsi, meaning a statement of Allah that is paraphrased in the wording of the Prophet And the only difference between a hadith Qudsi that is mutawatir and the verses of the Qur'an is that the hadith al-Qudsi, it comes in a form where the Prophet in his wahi, but it's paraphrased in his wording, while the Qur'an is static in the wording of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is ordered by Allah azza wa jalla. The Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet ﷺ, as we have all heard from our previous Imams, he says, إِلَّا الصَّوْمِ That Allah said, except Sawm, فَإِنَّهُ لِي It is only judged by me. All other acts, you get 10 to 700 its amount. إِلَّا الصَّوْمِ I'm the only one, Allah is the only one who judges your capacity of abstinence. Your capacity of siyam, not your capacity of not eating and drinking, but your conscious capacity of restricting and abstaining from obscenity and vulgarness in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands of you in this blessed month. Don't find this strange. Of the greatest crimes that a muhrim in a state of hajj does, فَلَا رَفَطَ Let them not engage in sexual contact with their spouse. وَلَا فُسُوق Let them not make any vile declarations, any loud obscenities. Let, not, not, let them not speak harshly to another person. وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Not even debate or argue, even from a valid point of view. Allah tells us, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ Debate people, even people of other faith, in a good way. Not in Hajj. There is no good way in your ihram. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Siyam and Sawm are steps in an active process of ibadah. Imam al-Ghazali and Ibn al-Qayyim and others, they write about this. And they speak about the concept of Sawm and the action of Siyam. 
Siyam begins Siyam al They use the word, it is the general folk, the, the sheep of the ummah. All of us, my dear brothers, we begin when I ask my young child Adam, seven years old, Adam, why don't you eat? He says, I'm not allowed. It's not I choose to love Allah through this act. Adam alayhi salam, of the first acts of worship he was endorsed with was siyam, sawm. فَلَا تَقْرَبَهَا بِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Don't go near that tree. Don't eat it. Abstain from it. Restrict yourself from it. Hold back your nafs. It's one of the most elementary processes that leads to success. It begins at the very base of restricting things because you're not allowed. You've been told, don't touch it, don't go near it, don't have this water, this food, essentials of life. Don't come near the comfort of your spouse as long as the sun is up. But this stepping stage if done correctly, with intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leads you to the second elevated stage of song. And then the word changes from siyam to song, where now it's a voluntary process. And now your jawarih, sawmul jawarih, your body and your limbs, your eyes fast, your ears fast, your tongue takes a rest. Everything about you begins to calculate. Its conceptualization of siyam changes to an abstinence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Normally I do this, but I can't in the month of Ramadan. Wallahi, some of you, some of our elders, you will remember, I'm old enough to remember, that the television, wallahi, if, I, if it was to be turned on in my house, in my, my father's home, growing up as a young man, just to turn on the television. This is Ramadan, ya akhi. What are you doing? It's Ramadan. It's a month of sacredness. Because it transitions from Siyam to Saum. That frivolity of YouTube and for the young ones playing Fortnite and for the others doing the things they do normally does not lead you to Saum. The third stage is Al Qalb. Your heart begins to fast. It begins to fast from the things that it desires and from the things it shouldn't desire. And after Jiltatul Istiraha, insha'Allah, I'm going to speak about that third aspect, which is about finding love in the closing days in the month of Ramadan. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from us our month of fasting. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to complete it with firmness and strength. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his light upon those Muslims who have departed before its completion. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to meet them in Jannatul Firdawi with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqoolu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim alayhi wa Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da Muhammad ibn Abdullah. We've come to understand the difference between Siyam and Sawm. We've come to understand that the Ajr of that multiple rewards that exceed 700, it's judged by Allah only because He is the one who only knows the capacity of our fasting, not just from food and drink, but from the abstinences of the things that we indulge in in the normality of our life. And we spoke about the elementary level of fasting, which is to begin with abstinence of food and drink, and it elevates to restricting some of our normative behaviors, to now beginning to think about our heart. It is the siyam of the specialists, the loved by Allah. 
The ones who become the awliya of Allah. And that word isn't a scary word. Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. They're the ones who have no fear from anything or anyone except Allah. And they have no sorrow in anything that is lost from their dunya because they know it's taken by Allah. Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. There are those who begin to master faithfulness and commend it that leads them to that consciousness of taqwa, which is the goal of Siyam. Finding love in the month of Ramadan is one of the greatest aims that I ask of you and myself before its days come to an end. Abdullah, each and every one of us, if it is not you, you know of someone who in this blessed month of Ramadan is in dispute with a fellow Muslim who has broken off either a family tie. Sometimes it's blood brothers. Sometimes it's a brother-in-law to his sister. Sometimes it's a son to his father or a mother to her daughter. You enter into the month of Ramadan and you stand before al ghafur al-Rahman and in every night in your witr, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. And know that there is a hijab between you and Allah's forgiveness that you have placed, that I have placed. In the words of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man la yurham, man la yurham, la yurham. The one who is unable to show compassion, the compassionate one will not give it to him. Show clemency and forgiveness. Show compassion to those who you live amongst on this earth. And the one above the heavens will grant it to you. The ever merciful, the Lord of mercy, only gives his mercy to those who show it to others. How dare you have that heart? that asks Allah, Allahumma ghfirli, and you see that brother, who wronged you, who hurt you, who harmed you, but in your heart you have no capacity to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to at least be the judge between you and them. Rather you ask, O oh Allah, bring an end to them. O oh Allah, do this to them. I will never forgive them. Until I die, Wallahi, I had two brothers. One of them said to me, Shaykh, when I die, I want you to leave my janazah because if my brother comes to pray, I want you to kick him out. A heart that becomes that dark, that even after your death you want to control and have hate that goes beyond your qabr. Ya Abdullah, ittaqillah. What heart is there that fasts to Allah, that has scorn and wrath and anger towards their spouse, the mother of their children? What heart is there of a son who looks at his father with disrespect and contempt in their heart and in their words? What siyam can be accepted? What psalm can be written? For someone who has disbanded from their neighbor, from their community, from their masjid, from their people, from their near and from their far, and thinks in their isolation that Allah will hear them. If your aim is the dunya, it is what you will receive. But if your aim is the akhirah, wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru. Allah will give you the dunya and akhirah. And this is the promise of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I leave you with this hadith. When he's asked sallallahu alayhi wa about how a person can find a place in Jannah, he says to the man, Sil man qata'ak. The one who cut you off, connect them. Subhanallah. Wa'afu amman zalam. And show forgiveness to the one who has wronged you. They wronged you. 
Wa'afu. Have afu. To the one who wronged you. What is that great dua that we will begin making in the last nights of the 10 of Ramadan? Allahumma innaka afu. Tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anni. That hijab that you have put between you and Allah can be lifted when your heart softens. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Is it not time that the Qur'an that is recited hour after hour in your taraweeh that it softens your heart to the remembrance of Allah? Am I not commanding you by the word of Allah and the sunnah of His Messenger Muhammad Wasallam? Step forward. And if it is not returned to you, Jannah is yours and the rest is for them. Make the first call. Send the first text. Give the first greeting. Open the first salam. This is the sunnah of our Nabi Muhammad He tells us that the one who begins salam is superior to the one who returns it. That the one who walks into a group should say salam upon those who are gathered. That it's not about your age and it's not about your seniority. But it's about your heart. Humble your heart in the closing days of Ramadan. And you will find that our Rahim ar Rahman shall cast this taqwa, which a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, at taqwa ha huna. He pointed to Umar radiallahu anhu's heart and to Ubay ibn Ka'ab in another riwayah and to Abu Huraira in another riwayah and to Mu'ad ibn Jabal in another riwayah and he would touch their heart physically and say, At-taqwa ha-huna, taqwa is in here, it's in your heart. La'allakum tattaqoon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our taqwa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the shaitan from our hearts. To take his whisperings out of our chest. To make us from those who close the month of Ramadan with compassion and mercy to those who have wronged us and those we have wronged. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal homes that have been broken. And to bring back families that have been separated. And to build within our communities a strong sense of purpose and love. Allahumma ameen. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to favor you and I with the blessings of Jannah al-Firdaus in our dunya and in our akhirah. We do its actions in the dunya and see its reward in the akhirah. Allahumma ameen. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joins us with our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to sit in the gatherings of the prophets of Allah and to be blessed with the shafa'a of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين واخذ الأعداء كأعداء الدين اللهم اهدنا واهدهم يا رب العالمين اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم تقبل منا شهر رمضان اللهم تقبل منا شهر رمضان اللهم تقبل منا شهر رمضان اللهم ربنا تقبل فيه صيامنا وقيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا اللهم تقبل فيه صلاتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف صدور قوم المؤمنين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى وصل اللهم وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وصل على محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى يا أرحم الراحمين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم